On this fifth Sunday of Easter, we hear Jesus say in the Gospel of John, remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you can do nothing. I invite you to examine this icon called Christ the Vine, created by a 15th century Cretan iconographer, Angelos Acotantos. For our reflection, it is obvious to see that Christ is the central figure representing the vine from which all branches flow and bear fruit. One might think that the 12 figures flowing from the vine are the 12 apostles who had followed Jesus on his earthly mission. However, the iconographer Angelos, while including a few of the 12 apostles, chose to include the four evangelists or gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to Jesus immediate left and right, and Peter and Paul slightly above Jesus, again on his left and right. Certainly, tradition has it that Matthew and John are among the 12 apostles and perhaps the gospel writers found in our New Testament. Of course, Peter is chief among the apostles, but what is the significance of St. Paul, who was not included as one of the original 12? And why is he immediately across from the apostle Peter? It must be noted that the iconographer Angelos lived in a time when the Byzantine Empire was in near collapse, bringing about a church council in the cities of Ferrara and Florence in the 1400s, where leaders strove to unify the Eastern and Western church. Angelo had hoped that the council would succeed and in another icon called the embrace of Peter and Paul, the artist attempted to show what reconciliation and unity would look like. The apostle Peter traditionally became a representative for the Church of the West, while Paul, who proclaimed the gospel to the Greek-speaking nations, was an image for the Eastern Church. Unfortunately, the Church Council's desire to bring about this unity between the East and the West at that time was not successful. However, this did not keep Angelos from writing this icon of Christ the vine. In fact, as the icon of Christ the vine shows, Jesus is the one who draws Peter and Paul together. If Christ is not the vine, then the embrace of Peter and Paul or the embrace of the Eastern and Western churches would never fully be realized. While we live in a church that is seemingly divided, in our ecumenical era, we can see that there are many branches. I believe that Angelos may have simply accepted this reality at that time, that what is truly ecumenical is the centrality of Christ and that our varied branches may still bear fruit despite our differences. St. John Paul II once said, we must celebrate our communion even in our imperfection. Let us pray that Christ Jesus may remain the vine, not only that we may each remain in him, but each of our branches of our Christian enterprise may remain together.